In this video, my friends, we're going to talk about lead time and how to track it. It was a big challenge for us to have visibility in the last few years on this logistics and supply chain lead time. Lack of visibility with the Suez Canal, with the inflation, with the price of the container, the lack of drivers on this planet of the pandemic and the consequences for us were shortages, too much inventory and maybe also extra cost with express uh, delivery. So in this new uh, video, I made a new Excel step by step tutorial to explain to you how to track simply uh, this critical parameters for your supply chain and also how to stabilize and reduce and improve it. So let's start it. You can download the Excel below the video. So before going to Excel, why is it so important to track the lead time correctly? It's very important to have a profitable supply chain if you want to have a good service for your customers to minimize your cost and also the inventory and the cash you are going to invest. So if you track the lead time incorrectly, the consequences will be a poor visibility. And if you have a poor visibility, you will have a poor service for your customers. You will have more inventory. I'm going to show you an example just after. You can also check this uh, video about safety stock and you also have extra cost to cover this lack of visibility, lack of service and overstock for your supply chain. So just to give you a very simple example, this is one of my Excel tutorial from safety stock. We have this average lead time. It's, I'm going too fast, but just to give you an idea. If I, for example, you can see my, we have different methodologies to calculate our real point and safety stock. You see, we have these values, like something around 1300 quantities. If I change my lead time because my lead time is incorrect, you can see that I will also like my real point and safety stock will explode and that will have a huge consequences on the profitability and all the performance of my supply chain. So it's very important to have the correct information to improve your performance and your service. So as you can see, we can have huge impact if you don't track the lead time correctly. And I'm going to share with you eight classic mistakes I have done and I have seen with my ABC supply chain members. Uh, these eight classic mistakes. First of all, you don't track your lead time. I, I see many small and big companies not even tracking the lead time today. You trust too much your transporter or supplier contract lead time. It doesn't mean that you have 20 days. Uh, like you suppress say, yeah, I have 20 days lead time. You should definitely change this number. The third one, you only focus on your transport lead time. Lead time is not only about transportation. I will get back to this. The next one is you never update your lead time in your Excel system or ERP. You have an SAP system. There is 25 days lead time, but you don't really know who was responsible for that and you just don't touch it. That's a big mistake. The next one is you trust too much your IT lead time. So maybe you have 20 days in your system, but it's maybe not the reality of your customer and uh, suppliers. And we'll get back to this as well. You don't consider also outliers extreme values when you track the lead time. I'm going to give you an example in Excel. Uh, you only care about the average lead time. This is not only about the average. I will <laughs> give you another example. And also you focus too much on uh, the average lead time uh, before even trying to stabilizing uh, this specific metric. So that's the eight mistakes. I'm going to cover all of them in this quick tutorial. So let's go back to the basic. What is a supply chain lead time? A supply chain lead time is the amount of time between a client order and a delivery. So you may have a supplier that will deliver a client. It could be a business to business client or it could be a business to consumer uh, client. That will be the same impact. It's the amount of time and the lead time is basically everywhere, everywhere from the raw material supplier to the factory, to the transportation, the warehouse, the local transport, and it could be like a retail a retailer or maybe an e-business uh, client. Okay, so we have upstream lead time and we have downstream lead time. And the idea is really to cover the total lead time. So what is the total lead time? The total lead time is between what we, what we say we need stock until the customer reception. And between the, what we need and the customer reception, you have a lot of steps and I'm going to cover one by one all these steps and make sure that it's clear for you. The first part will be the review period of frequency. Then we're going to talk about production lead time. Then we're going to talk about international transport. Then we're going to talk about warehouse lead time. Then we're going to talk about local delivery and the total lead time is between I need stock and I receive my inventory. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about the review period. What is the review period? Let's take one example. Uh, you have a retail company or you have a factory and you can only order once a week, every Tuesday to your supplier. So let's say you need like raw material. I need stock on Thursday, but I need to wait until Tuesday because I can only order on Tuesday. So we need to consider this 
uh, review period. And in this specific case, we're going to wait five days before passing the order. So it could be from one day to seven days waiting. And we should definitely include this review period in your total lead time. The second one may be the IT confirmation lead time. Like I was working in a big retail and FMCG company. And just to process the order, I had to wait from like around four or between four and six hours just to process uh, the order. And that's something else also you, you should consider, uh, like in this specific example, it could be like a very old ERP system, even the new ones, just to confirm all the billing and the bill of materials and, and also availability. Uh, this is a lead time you should consider. Then we do have what we call the production lead time. And for the production lead time, we have four main options. I try to keep it uh, very simple. The first lead time production may be uh, what we call the make to stock MTS. Products are finished and stored before receipt of a customer orders. Like you can see, like we're going to produce inventory and this inventory is ready and you don't have to produce uh, to ship the products. That's the first uh, lead time you may have. This is the fastest one because you don't have to wait for production. The second one is what we call the assemble to order or ATO. Uh, in this specific case, we're going to prepare the production with semi-finished products, but we're going to uh, assemble only when we will receive uh, the order, what we call the ATO lead time. The third one is the most classic with the first one is what we call make to order or MTO. We're going to produce only once we receive the customer order MTO lead time. And the first one is what we call the engineer to order ETO. We're going to basically create and customize the products starting by design and purchasing all the raw materials only once we receive the, the order. So we call that the ETO lead time. So at the end, we have four types of production lead time, but in any case, you have a specific lead time that you should track for your first order, but also for your replenishment orders. Okay, so next we do have the international transport lead time, but before even shipping, we have to wait. Most of the time we have to wait. The factory is ready to ship, but wait. For example, you may have a factory in Vietnam and that wants to ship to Los Angeles, but you only have like one shipping, like uh, sea freight shipping uh, once a week. So we have to wait before sending the products uh, to your boat to ship to uh, Los Angeles. So we have the waiting time and you have a lot of waiting time all around the supply chain that you should also consider in your lead time. Then we do have the international transport by boat, by plane, uh, by truck, uh, whatever. Then we move to what we call customs clearance. And this lead time can be quite long according to the type of products you have and where uh, these products are coming and where they're going. Then we do have uh, the warehouse lead time and the warehouse lead time in the warehouse. You have a lot of different specific lead time. It could be the warehouse lead time in your factory or in your warehouse or distribution centers directly whatever you are in the supply chain. But in this warehouse, you have multiple lead times. The first one is the waiting when your supplier is waiting to um, receive and uh, send your uh, products to your warehouse. Then you have the reception lead time from the reception to the storage. Then we, you do have the lead time between storage and picking and packing area. Then you do have the picking lead time and the packing lead time. And then you have another waiting time before we can ship the products to your consumer. So you have a multiple lead time that you should track. You can track the total lead time or you can track them individually if you really want to improve uh, their performance. Next step, we do have local transport if you have international supply chain. And finally, we receive the products and we're gonna stop uh, the chrono uh, to consider the total lead time between I need stock and I receive stock. And this is the total lead time that you should track. You don't necessarily need to track all these single steps, but if you want to improve them, you should do it. And what we're going to do next, we're going to track the lead time in Excel step by step to keep it very simple and improve your performance. So you can download this Excel below the video and I really recommend to work with me and, and practice with me. Okay. So welcome back to Excel. Once again, you can download this file below the video. What do we have? We have a very simple example. In this example, we do have 10 orders. Uh, from between one supplier and one client, one supplier in China, one client in the US in Los Angeles. Uh, the idea is really, first of all, to track all your orders between all your suppliers and clients. I'm going to show one bigger example uh, just after, but keep it very simple. You don't necessarily, as explained before, need to track all the intermediate steps. You can just do between, okay, I need stocks and I receive stock. The first information you need is the order day creation. Like you, you can see that this company is creating <laughs> orders the first of the month. I'm surprised they're working first of January. <laughs> the second one is, okay, what was the quantity ordered? The next one is what was the value 
of this order. Then what is really important is what is your contract delivery date? What is the lead time uh, between your supplier and clients? That's the, the you know, like the engagement and the commitment between your suppliers and you. So in this specific case, we do have uh, 30 days and we just had like, like the order day was January and we just had 30 days. Okay. So you should do this automatically in your system. And then what is really important is to know, okay, but what was the real delivery date? So how do you, can you track this? You should have a system when you, you scan your products at your warehouse or in your factory or in your retail store or in, uh, to your customer directly, you should be able to track this information if possible automatically to make sure this is correct. And then we do need to track the real lead time. So what we're going to do now, you have the contract lead time. The contract lead time is uh, the difference between your contract delivery, delivery date, sorry, so CDD and the other date. So you can see that it's always 30 days. But what is really important is to track the real lead time. And the real lead time is the difference between your real delivery date and the order date. Okay, so you can see the difference between these two and you just have to copy and paste this formula. You can see for the first example that we don't have any difference, but for this one, we have a delay of 10 days. So how to calculate the delay? It's very simple. You just have to do equal real lead time minus contract lead time, right? That's it. And you can see like directly in this specific formula that this one is uh, 10 days, you have minus five days for this one. So this one was uh, delivered in advance, which is not necessarily good, but th because that will increase the value of your inventory in your warehouse. And maybe you don't have the capacity to receive too much stock. So I don't like to have <laughs> my inventory in advance as well. And you just have to duplicate the formula. And you can also uh, include a conditional formatting. You can download my file if you want to use the same conditional formatting with these colors. At the end, what do we have? We have the uh, delay per order. And what is important at the end is to calculate the uh, average lead time. So the average contract lead time is the same. We just do an average of this 30 days. But the average of my real lead time is not 30 days, it's 37.4. So I'm using the same formula, average formula. And I can see like we have more than seven days above the contract lead time for this specific supplier. And the average lead time is just the average of all these specific orders. And we do have 7.4 days. You can also do the difference between these two. OK, so it's pretty simple uh, <laughs> to, create, to track this lead time, but it is so important to do it for every single suppliers or with every single clients, if you have a lot of volumes per clients, it could be like if you work with Walmart or Nestle or Coca-Cola, very important to have it per suppliers and per customer to track it in the time and then to start creating this kind of charts. This chart is just the difference between what is my lead time, what is my contract lead time, and what is my average lead time. And my average lead time is just this curve and I just created um, a formula here you can use and check my file if you want to, to see that. And you can see like this lead time is really not stable. <laughs> That's a big challenge. And what we should do in this specific case, there is a big problem in this specific case is like we should review. I was explaining before that uh, it was very important to update the lead time in your system, but you can really see that the average lead time of these suppliers should not be 30, uh, 30 uh, days, it should be 37. And if you don't use the right lead time, you will have this tendency of to understock your, your products and your real point point, and you won't have enough stock and you will have shortages and stock out because of that. So the first session I will recommend in these specific suppliers between China and uh, Los Angeles will be to move from 30 to, 7, 30 to 37 days. Here we go. And to have this new average lead time that you can use for your safety stock real point or maybe just a min max solution if you want to keep it uh, very simple. You can check all my other videos if you want to check how to improve your inventory. So the first step would be exactly to update your lead time or maybe to go back to supply to say, hey, what are you doing? We were supposed to have 30 days and we do have 37 days. That's the first step you should do. Then I will go back to the classic uh, lead time mistakes. I will talk about the first four. Be very careful to update your Excel and system with the real average lead time. Then you should also be careful of not trusting too much your IT lead time. Uh, why? Because you may forget the review period. I was explaining that before. Uh, if you can only order once a week, be very careful to consider the review period in addition to your uh, average lead time, which is not 
tracked most of the time in your system. You should also be careful because sometimes we think like the uh, IT lead time is the correct one, but let's say you may deliver your inventory to your store, but this is not what is going to see your customer because you may need an extra four hours to move your inventory from uh, the reception area to the shelf uh, to your customer. So maybe you should also add an extra lead time uh, for that if it's not part of your tracking uh, system. Then the next change will be that you don't consider outliers or extreme values. So what are you talking about, Edouard? I'm talking about like problems, like huge problems that will have a huge consequence on your lead time. It could be like a war, it could be like the Suez Canal, it could be just someone who forgot to scan your products. At the end, let's go back into Excel. Let's say that you have one order, for example, this one what, that moved from 25 like days real lead time to 200. May it could be just like you don't have any stock. You don't have any stock for in your suppliers or in your factory. And at the end, you have one specific order that will go to 200 days. And at the end, your average will be 54 days, but just because of one uh, real orders. And as you can see in this graph, you don't really want to consider your average lead time with this specific one. So I would definitely uh, be very careful and find a system to automatically clean this type of orders to do not consider it in your average lead time because you will have much more inventory or safety stock just because of one delivery. The next thing you have to be careful is not only care about the average lead time. On the left, we have 37.4 days. On the right, we have 37.5 days. But look at the orders on the left and the one on the right. You can see that the one on the right is much more stable. And this is what you want before even like checking, okay, this average lead time is a bit above this one. I, I definitely prefer to work with this supplier and lead time because it's much more stable, predictable. So I won't have to cover with so much inventory or safety because this one is much more uh, predictable and stable. So focus first on your stability. I do recommend as well to classify your suppliers per level of uncertainty level. This is one example uh, from the, the dashboard I'm uh, creating for my ABC Splation members to really have different level of a level of uncertainty and based on this level of uncertainty you can also adapt your level of safety stock to improve your uh, performance in terms of service but also in terms of inventory uh, levels i do also recommend to use a dynamic safety stock i have a quick introduction in this uh, youtube video so you should definitely check this video to cover this level of um, suppliers and lead time uncertainty that's why my last recommendation is really to focus first on tracking then you, you should stabilize. And then finally, you should focus on reducing and improving your lead time to improve the performance of your uh, total supply chain. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or what would be my, my next video maybe around how to reduce and stabilize the lead time. And if you want to go to the next level, I have a new uh, free workshop where I'm going to explain to you how to reduce your stockouts and overstocks. I'm going to focus on certain parameters and of course the lead time is one of them. You have all the links below the video if you want to join. I will take much more time to explain to you how to improve uh, your supply chain performance simply and automatically. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a like, give me a comment, and I see you very soon for another video.